what is up reselling world welcome to my channel reseller life my name's john and i am a full-time ebay reseller so what i got for you today is a sold video what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you a about 55 items that i sold this week i'm going to go through each one tell you where I sourced it or found it, what I paid for it, and what it sold for, and estimate about how long it took to sell. And yeah, so we'll get right into it. This is actually uh, something that is new to me this week, but big tip for you resellers out there, these, um, these RAM memory, uh, chips or, or whatever they are, I don't exactly know. All I know is I recently purchased a 20 pound box of them, which was about 500 of them for $500. And uh, they are currency. If, uh, if you get an opportunity, I got this one at a local auction. Um, I did have to pay $500, so it was kind of a risk. Uh, but it has really panned out and panned out quickly for me. Uh, you're going to be seeing uh, quite a few of these as I uh, go through all the, the listings that I'm going to show you. But I got these at the beginning of the week uh, within the last seven days. And I listed about 75 of them uh, within the first two to three days. And uh, I've sold quite a few of them. So this one here is a Micron 8 gigabyte. The Micron is the name. There's only the M here. Um, it took me a little bit of research and looking up that number right there that starts with the MT16. That's actually the model number of this of this memory. And then right underneath you will see the 8 GB, which is that's the uh, amount of memory it has, which is a uh, the eight gigabytes and then you're gonna see some shorter ones and some longer ones this is a longer one which means it goes to a desktop computer the shorter ones go to laptops and the numbers right after the 2R X8 the PC3 that one I believe is important um, you'll see a PC3 or a PC2 or something like that on there some of the numbers on these things are common uh, with each other, and then some of them are different. But um, you'll, you'll have to do your research and figure out exactly how to list them. I do know, though, that MT16JTF number on the top there, that is the number that I, I had a lot of luck with when it came to looking up comps for these Micron chips. But there's a... There's a handful of different brands that I had to look up and I had to figure out which numbers meant what and uh, sometimes it meant I had to put them all in and just try to figure out which one was the model number because obviously here it doesn't say model number next to it and there's a lot of numbers on there. But there was about 500 of these in in the box. Whoops, where did I get? There we go. My Mac is a little sensitive sometimes. Um, so there was about 500 in the 20 pound box that I bought and I paid, so I paid about a dollar a piece for them. Um, what I, a tip I want to give you also though, when you're processing through, if you do come across one of these boxes at like an auction or anything like that, is uh, the memory, the, the memory amount. I, I went through all 500 of these memories and uh, about... I would say about 150 to 175 of them were actually worth the price range that I was looking for, which was basically uh, $10 and above. And it was the ones that were at least two gigabytes of memory. Anything under two gigabytes of memory, um, unless it was a fluke, uh, a collectible, a rare one or something like that, uh, wasn't wasn't worth my time of looking them up every single tiny little number and I do suggest getting a magnifying glass because they're very small numbers you'll be fine out the gate uh, looking them up but after a while it will put some strain on your eyes 
Um, so yeah, I wouldn't waste your time with anything under one gigabyte, under two gigabytes, excuse me. Don't waste your time with anything under two gigabytes. Um, your eight gigabytes are your big winners, um, and you'll get your fours and your twos, and uh, and you can bundle them up too. You, I could have definitely bundled up a lot of these and uh, made a lot more money, but I don't want to take too much time on this one. You'll be seeing plenty of them, but have a dollar in this one into this one. It sold for twenty eight dollars and eighty cents, and it sold uh, within a couple days. Next up. All right, so this is a Singer sewing machine foot pedal. This is a foot pedal um, for a sewing machine. Uh, they all kind of look like this. They'll have two outlets on them because one will plug into your sewing machine and the other one will plug into the wall. Um, I believe I got this at the, um, the Goodwill bins or the Goodwill outlets. And... Uh, I'm sure it had a sewing machine attached to it, but at your at your outlets, you pay by the pound. And I'm not going to pay by the pound for a sewing machine that I doubt works. But I will take off the foot pedal because I know those sell super well. Um, this one wasn't a real popular model because we typically get more for these um, foot pedals. Um, they more so range about the $20 mark and above. Uh, this one, this one took a little bit while to sell. It just wasn't a popular model at the time, but I'll take it. I probably paid a dollar for it, and I got uh, eight dollars and sixteen cents. It took this one. It's, it probably took about four months to sell. Next up, all right. So this is a great find, um, and this is a this is definitely one to be on the lookout for. Um, some people might get mad at me for letting this one go, but this is a this is a retail arbitrage deal. Um, this has a sales rank in Amazon within uh, ten thousand, and I believe on Amazon they're going for about fourteen to sixteen dollars. I'm having some trouble with my Amazon account right now, or this would have been on Amazon. And from my understanding, uh, the twelve books that I got at this location. Um, would have sold probably within a couple of hours at a, at a 10,000 sales rank and being new. So I found these, if you're, um, if you have these in your area is a uh, Fry's Foods grocery store or, um, in other places there, it's a Kroger's. So I went to Fry's, uh, two weeks ago and I saw this book and I saw that it had a great rank. And I saw that it was even selling on eBay, uh, but they were clearanced at six dollars and ninety-nine cents, and that just wasn't enough margin for me at the time. And then I went back last week, and they clearanced them down to two dollars and ninety-nine cents. That was uh, that was my sweet spot. That was a winner. So they had twelve on hand, and I bought all twelve. Um, I'm trying to get my Amazon thing figured out. Hopefully I'll have it figured out within the next couple of days because this one took about four or five days to sell on eBay. Um, and if I can get it going on Amazon, I can I can move them all a lot faster and make a little bit more or maybe about the same actually. So I need, I netted about six to seven dollars on this. I didn't pay for the shipping. Um, and yeah, it was a retail arbitrage. I paid three dollars for it. Sold within a week. And I picked it up at uh, Fry's or if you're more Midwest or out East, probably Kroger's. Okay, so more memory. These are from the, the 20 pound box of memory that I bought. These are Ripjaw uh, G Skill. Uh, they are, it is not eight gigabytes per. Like it says, it is two times four, four gigabytes, which equals a total of eight gigabytes. Um, these sold really fast within a couple of days. Um, and as you can see here, I did process through all of those memories and I made stacks of ones that matched up. So these, I've sold two of these and I still have another one left. And they sold for $33.80 since for just this one lot and I had three lots of this one alone so like I said these things are currency um, if you get an opportunity to jump on them uh, I suggest it but you're likely if there's anybody else at the auction or the crowd that you're going to 
you're going to pay up for them because if they're familiar with it, um, they know the value and they're easy to list too. Easy to list. All right. So this has been listed since last year and I kind of expected it to, to take a while to sell because it didn't sell last year and it's a jacket and it's a heavy jacket and uh, we live in the desert. I live, I'm out here in Arizona and jackets don't sell very well for me out on the West Coast. Um, our sales drop down the more toward the Midwest and East we get because shipping prices get outrageous. So most of my sales are going to be within the mountain mountain region and, and West Coast because the shipping is a lot more affordable. Um, so this took about a year to sell uh, and this came out of a storage locker. So I probably have about 50 cents, maybe a quarter into it. Um, and it's not like a super, super great brand, but it was a nice jacket. Uh, this is a, a, one of my early listings. This is at my uh, thrift store uh, in our back studio. So that's how I can tell it's a really old listing is because of the setup. Um, but it sold for $18.49 and the buyer paid for shipping. Next up, okay, this one's been listed since last year as well. As you can see, the same setup in the background as our, our old studio. But this is a this is an Oakland Raiders puffer jacket. Um, it's not a starter. It is a Reebok. And um, I don't know if it's vintage or not. Uh, I wasn't able to date it, and I didn't see a tag in there that said made in the USA, which is uh, typically a giveaway uh, for vintage clothing. Um, but took about a year to sell if it didn't sell last winter it wasn't going to sell in the off season i don't have faith in the big heavy ones selling during the off season uh so but it's sold now and i got it out of a storage locker so i have about 50 cents into it and we got 25 dollars and 80 cents for it next up oh more memory so this one is another micron uh this is a four gig and couple days at most to sell $13.80 or 68 cents okay this came from uh, one of our local swap meets um, we have two swap meets out here in my area and um, uh, one of them I get a lot of stereos from uh, this is an older stereo uh, I probably pay about five dollars for it and yes, that you read that right, cassette player. So we still, I mean, it was listed for probably about six months. We still got $32.95 for it. Uh, I don't know if people are actually listening to the cassettes still, possibly. I mean, I do sell cassettes also. Uh, but a lot of times people are just looking to uh, get their vehicles back to stock. So... There we go. Five dollars into it, sold for thirty-two seventy-nine. And I definitely recommend people to be on the lookout uh, for uh, car stereos. Uh, so this one here, uh, this one took about a, three weeks to sell, and uh, this is a retail arbitrage deal. And I picked these up. I picked these up about a month ago, uh, maybe less, maybe about like three weeks, maybe three and a half weeks. And uh, they're not moving as quickly as I would like them to, but they are moving. You know, it's better than being at a standstill. I paid $5 a piece for them. I bought about 30 of them. And uh, they're selling for $15.10. And I believe I am paying the shipping for, the, for these. A lot of my retail arbitrage type stuff, my first class shipments, which is uh, smaller stuff. First class shipment being uh, something that, that is lighter than 16 ounces and uh, can ship first class and, and it's a lot cheaper than than priority shipments or, or anything larger so um, I with with my retail arbitrage type stuff I can do free shipping as long as it's like a first class shipment because I know exactly how much I'm making on each one of these which is about five dollars it was kind of a double your money kind of thing I, I pay five and I make five on, on them uh, when they sell All right, so this I also got last year, and I got it actually at a yard sale out here. This is a Dale Earnhardt Jr. Uh, suede jacket, 
and I paid two dollars for it at a yard sale. Uh, it didn't sit all year long. We actually uh, I stored this away for the winter time, along with uh, bags and bags and bags of other winter clothing and, and that sort of stuff. This took I would say about three months to sell. Two dollars into it sold for three thirty three dollars and thirty two cents. I wouldn't recommend all NASCAR stuff, but a jacket like this, and uh, Earnhardt Jr. is a pretty popular guy, so I, I would recommend his stuff, especially if it's a jacket. I don't know about t-shirts or hats or that sort of stuff. The NASCAR market is pretty flooded. All right, this here is a Pokemon watch. This is a retail arbitrage deal that I actually got within the last three days, and I believe I listed this last night or the night before, and I got two of these. And one has sold already. I paid seven dollars for this at uh, at Walmart, and uh, hopefully the next one sells too because that's a that's a pretty good return. Twenty eight dollars and five cents. All right, I can't talk about these enough. My Cuisinart food processors, I love them. Um, I've sold hundreds of them, and uh, my heart still skips a beat when I see one in thrift stores and yard sales because I can typically pick them up. For less than 10 bucks. Um, I, unless it is new in the box, I will always part them out because this is what I get for pretty much every part that comes out of them, with the exception of a few of the blades and uh, the, a small pusher part that goes to the top of it. Everything else, pretty much 20 bucks. You got uh, the working bowl, you got the lid, you got the initial blade. Uh, that's most commonly used with, with them, and then the base or motor itself. They all pretty much sell for about twenty to twenty-five dollars a piece, and they sell very fast. I listed this one about a week and a half ago. Um, I think I paid five dollars for the whole food processor. Food food processor um, got about five parts out of it, so um, I have about a dollar into this part. So, Cuisinart food processors. Definitely be on the lookout. All right, this one was also listed since last year. Um, we were kind of—I was all kind of on a on a kick of uh, listing kind of '80s, '90s teal and pink uh, vintage clothing, and it was actually selling really well for me uh, last year and a couple of years before. For like the last three years, it's actually been selling well. It has definitely slowed down a little bit for me. So this was actually a big surprise when this actually sold. I, I thought this was something that was going to be in my inventory and I was going to have to go back and, uh, and pull it from my inventory because I thought that this kind of this uh, kind of phased out this style of going back to this the 80s or 80s, 90s kind of mom look with the exception of mom jeans. Mom jeans are still very popular. So if you find those old uh, Levi's or Calvin Klein's that are tapered on the bottom, and high waisted up top, definitely uh, still jump on those because you're still getting, you know, fifteen to twenty five dollars a pair on those, depending on the style and condition. But this one came out of a storage locker. I have about fifty cents to, you know, about fifty cents into it, and it took a year to sell, but still got twenty four dollars and sixty eight cents. I don't know if I would uh, recommend that style of vintage nineties clothing anymore, though. Yep, here we go, more memory. So these are, let's see, I don't want, I don't, let's see, Hynix or Hynix uh, as the brand. These are four gigabyte. They go to a desktop computer. Um, together it equals eight gigs. Took about two to three days to sell. I have, uh, I have zero left and I've sold uh, three of them already. So this is the third one that I've sold. And I sold them for $21.05. Next up, all right, I sell a lot of these. This is just an AC adapter. Um, and that's pretty much what it says there on the sticker and the title. Uh, that's kind of how I put it in there. It's, it's, I don't know if it's a generic or it's, a, or it's genuine. I couldn't find what it goes to. I just find the model numbers on these. Uh, I pick them up for almost nothing. Um, and they're very easy to list. They're very easy to ship. Um, so I sell a lot of these. It, it is not my target 
excuse me, margin on a product that I like to sell because they do go pretty low. But like, I, like I've said before, they are so easy to list. I can literally list 20 of these in an hour. And even if I've made $5 a piece on all of them, you know, do the math, that's a hundred bucks an hour and listing them, you can pretty much, I mean, shipping them, shipping them is basically, you can do it as fast as you can print out the labels. Uh, you just throw them in a, a padded envelope and seal them up and stick your label on it and then they're gone. So look out for AC adapters. You know, if you got a, an expensive product or an expensive electronic or anything like that and it, it takes a crap on you, it stops working, you know, you may still be able to sell it for parts, um, but more importantly, take that AC adapter off of it because somebody else somewhere has that expensive electronic and their dog or their cat, you know, chewed up their AC adapter or they lost it or it, it stopped working or they just tugged it one too many times and, it's, and, and it, it, you know, it broke on. So look out for AC adapters. You know, I sell tons of AC adapters. There's a great market for them. They're super cheap, and you find them everywhere, everywhere. So AC adapter. Uh, I have hundreds of these listed, so I can't tell you exactly how long it took me to sell this one because I don't know when I listed this one. So, But I can tell you I have less than a quarter into it, and it sold for $5.13. And they don't all sell for that, that low. That's kind of like the low end. I, I've sell AC adapters um, upwards of uh, $70 sometimes if... Uh, to a real expensive item. All right, next up, this is a Netgear N750 wireless uh, router. So I sell a lot of routers and modems. I get the majority of them from either storage lockers, uh, or Goodwill bins, or yard sales. Um, a lot of them are outdated and they're not worth anything, so definitely uh, look them up. Um, but at the bins, these, these things weigh nothing. Uh, hard goods at our bins are 89 cents a pound. So they might weigh a, a pound and some of these things get really pricey. I, I've sold some that I picked up at the bins, paid a dollar for them or less, and I've sold them for 80 bucks. So keep an eye out for them. They always have the model number right up front or right on the back. It's really easy to find. Real easy to look up. Let's see. Here we go. There we go. And right there, WNDR4300. So one thing about them, they're, they're super easy to look up and they're super easy to list. Anything with a model number and you don't have to take measurements of, like clothing, is super easy to list and they're super easy to test you know you can uh, you can test it yourself at your house um, just unplug yours and hook this one up and see if it works and how it works but yeah definitely be on the lookout for modems and routers all right so this came from uh, a goodwill thrift uh, I purchased this one about a month and a half ago I paid six dollars for it um, it did not sell for $89. Uh, I took a best offer for this. Um, I don't always put best offers on my items because I just got really tired of people making offers and not actually making the payment on the items. So I took off all of my best offers uh, so I don't have to deal with opening up cases against people that are never going to pay for it. And then I had to take my item off the shelf basically for the period of time that eBay gives the seller that is never going to pay for the item time to pay for the item. Not all sellers are like that, but I was dealing with it for a lot for a while and I just decided I wasn't gonna take offers anymore and uh, life has actually been a lot better since then. Um, if you're a new seller, I, I, I recommend you putting best offer on your listings. Um, I, at one point, right now have about 4,000 to 4,500 active listings, and at one point we had about 7,500 active listings. 
Um, so it was, it's a lot more to manage and I'm a little bit more spoiled when it comes to income because I have so many listings. Uh, so if you're just starting in it and you're trying to really get some traffic going and move some product and get your feedback uh, built up, um, put it up there because it does help your the eBay algorithm and your search, uh, giving that extra option. You know, eBay does reward you for that. Me, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just not doing it anymore. But anyhow, I do suggest that if you're a new seller um, or any seller, if you got the patience for it, I just kind of lost the patience for it. Um, but me personally, I'm happier with not having best offer anymore. But some things I will do it. Like with this thing, I did not want to sit on it throughout the year. Um, I thought the market was actually going for this price or a little bit higher. But I thought that was a little inflated. Um, and this jacket wasn't in the best condition. Um, I can show you some of the pictures here. But some of the buttons had wear on them. Um, and... Uh, there was some writing. There was like, see that button there? Uh, it was all the paint was fading off of it. Um, somebody wrote their name on the inside of it. The zipper had some issues. Let's see. Uh, there it is. You can barely see it, but there is a name right there. If you can see right underneath starter, there's a name. So yeah, the, the jacket had some issues. So that's why I put on uh, best offer because uh, I didn't know how that was gonna set me back and I, I wanted to move this thing this winter. Um, so I took a best offer of $60 on this and I, had put, I paid $6 for it. So definitely be on the lookout for vintage starter puffer jackets, stuff that kids wore back in the 80s and 90s, like me and my brothers and all of our, my goofy friends back in the day. Um, you know, it was an exciting morning, Christmas morning, when we got our got a starter jacket because, uh, um, yeah, we were all poor kids anyway. So getting something like that was uh, pretty exciting. Vintage starter jackets. Be on the lookout. Doesn't matter what team it is for the most part. All right, this is um, squirrel nut zippers uh, cassette. <laughs> don't ask. I I don't know. Um, it probably came out of a storage locker. Uh, looking at the photos and the setup, uh, this is probably something that uh, one of my employees just found and it was probably sitting in a death pile somewhere and my my uh, my listers uh, were paid per listing. Uh, they were paid $1.50 per listing. So when they saw something like this laying around, uh, they didn't think twice about jumping on it and listing it because uh, it, took, takes, it takes you about two minutes to list something like this, especially if there's a barcode on the cassette. Uh, they're not as big fans of clothing, but I don't blame them. Uh, so this probably came out of a storage locker. I probably have a nickel into it. Um, from the setup, uh, it's probably been listed for about six months and sold for $3.88. All right, so this is a Dell Logitech mouse. Um, it's an older one. Um, this is probably another one of those things that uh, one of my listers uh, put up because it was an easy listing and they saw just enough meat on the bone to where um, I wouldn't I wouldn't say anything about it which you know there 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 was a little bit of meat on the bone I mean we probably made a dollar off of this and maybe another dollar off of shipping so we probably made two bucks out of this after paying fees and paying them their commission for, for listing it. And uh, that's all right. Easy, easy shipment, easy listing. Um, and we're moving product. Uh, it's been listed for a long time though. Maybe I would say eight months or so. I wouldn't recommend the, the old mouses to, to list and sell. Uh, I do recommend mouses though, especially uh, gaming mouses. The gaming mouses, you'll notice them uh, when you see them because they all kind of look like the Batmobile. Uh, they're all uh, pretty gnarly looking. They got uh, cool curves. They're like little. Uh, they're like the Lamborghini of, of 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 computer mouses. So definitely be on the lookout for those if you see any pe peculiar looking mouses, because uh, I've sold some of those used. Uh, I think the the most I've gotten for one used is uh, about the ninety dollar range. So yeah, be on the lookout for. Them. All right, this is a, um, a PS2 game, Simpsons Hit and Run. 
Uh, this has been listed for about five months. Uh, this came out of a storage locker, so we have uh, you know maybe a quarter into it, and it sold for thirteen dollars and thirty three cents. Uh, that's another one. Uh, gaming is always great. Gaming is always going to be good, um, but uh, old PlayStation games are definitely making a great comeback this year. Um, and they're staying strong right now. So uh, original PlayStation and PlayStation 2, um, they're doing good. So uh, don't uh, don't pass up on them. Like the the, the value of uh, PS1 and PS2 games are definitely going up, and they're selling a lot better than they've uh, they have in a long time. All right. So some of you that that watch the channel, you probably saw this in a haul video. Um, this is a Vineyard Vines tie. I got this at a uh, local church thrift store, and I paid 50 cents for it. It sold within about two weeks for exactly that, $17.79. Vineyard Vines, look out for the whale, the whale in there. I should have taken a closer picture, or uh, gave you a closer view of the whale to look out for, but there's a their symbol is a whale. All right, so yep, we sold a lot of bathing suits in December. And believe it or not, we, they got shipped to New York. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but they sold, so right on. So I've uh, I've historically had good luck with uh, these type of bathing suits, these uh, tankinis, and uh, they're basically uh, a bathing suit bathing suit uh, top that kind of covers up uh, a, a woman's belly. Um, you know, or are there like maternity tops for uh, pregnant women or, or and stuff like that, or just women that are just more conservative? So, um, um, I think at last, I think over the summer these were listed individually, and uh, they they this was like the last of them that I had that didn't sell. So when I when I go back through and I re inventory some of my stuff and I'll pull this stuff out. Um, this was uh, bundled up. They were all the, the single listings were taken down, and this one was bundled up, and uh, it sold actually for a decent price too, considering it's December, uh, sixteen dollars and uh, thirty five cents. These probably came from the bins, and uh, clothing at the bins are a dollar is a dollar seventy nine a pound for me, and so this probably cost me maybe two to three dollars. Took um, I would say four months to sell as a lot all right so uh, rock band parts pieces uh drums guitars all do well definitely be on the lookout for all of them not everything sells really good you got to look up your model numbers um i get these at the goodwill bins um the whole setup i'll typically grab the whole setup um the way the bins are though, everything gets thrown around and tossed around and beat up and tangled up and everything like that. So uh, I won't I won't even try to put it all together and complete it um, because all the parts sell really well, especially these foot pedals. Um, the whole setup for the rock band drum set, even the legs and the foot pegs, like the little posts. Uh, they weigh nothing, so when I get them at the bins, I don't pay nothing for them, maybe a dollar. And I, I typically get 15 to $20 just for the little leg extensions. You know, people people lose stuff, you know, it happens, and things get broken, brothers start fighting over the game, and they wrestle over the drum set, and they break one of the legs. So, who knows? Who knows? I'm just kind of picturing me and my brothers when we were kids. But, so, rock band foot pedal for the drum, I... Uh, probably paid a buck and a half for this it has been listed for about three to four months and this is actually the lower end of it twelve dollars and five cents they typically sell closer to the twenty dollar mark so yeah rock band stuff um even if you have to part it out and find pieces the pedals uh definitely uh a winner though this has been listed for a year this is a cabela's jacket cabela's and bass pro shop or i think they're the same company now i think uh, bass pro shop bought out cabela's um but cabela's stuff does, does well uh, i would have thought that this jacket would have done better but um, who knows who knows sometimes it, it feels like uh your ebay listings end up in purgatory so 
Um, tinkering with your, your eBay listings definitely helps out. Uh, I don't know how many times I've had eBay listings that I forgot were even there because there, there had been just no traffic on them. And I'll go in, I'll click on it, I'll revise it, and I'll switch around two words in the title. I won't take any out, I won't add any, I'll just switch a couple around. Um, like, like here, I'll put instead of uh, dark green, I'll put green dark. Um, men's, I'll put, you know, after size here, so men's size extra large. Um, I won't really change anything. And then suddenly it'll sell. Um, for some reason, it'll get visible again and then it'll sell. Something about the way eBay is set up, a new listing or an ending listing seems to get more traffic than anything. So list every day and another, another trick, um, if you don't mind paying a little bit of extra fee, um, run your listings for three days, seven days, 10 days, not auction style. Uh, I'm not a fan of auction style, but just make it so your, your items are ending and restarting more often especially ending. For some reason, I get a lot of sales when my, my listings end. Um, so if they're ending every three days or seven days or 10 days, you are getting a ton of visibility because you're getting bumped up to the very top when your items are about to end. So think about that. I know there's some extra fees involved, but depending on your product and your item and how fast you want to push stuff, um, it's definitely a great option. I've done it before when I really want to get some sales rolling and it works really, really well for me. And it's worth the small fee that they charge, uh, especially if I'm going to really be uh, putting out a lot of product. So this was listed for a year. I believe it came out of a storage locker. Um, so I got about 50 cents to a quarter into it and sold for $9.44. Next up, all right, these came from a local thrift store. These are Harley Davidson jeans. Um, they were $5 at Thrift, uh, but I believe it was a half price day, so I paid $2.50 for them. And they've been listed for about four months and sold for $9.54. I thought these would do much better, but I, I'm thinking because they were women's might have had something to do with it because Harley stuff normally sells a lot better for me, even Harley denim. I've got a lot of these listings, so I'm gonna try to move it a little faster. I ramble on, so sorry. If, uh, if I'm rambling on too much. All right, so this is a vintage book, uh, A Girl of the Limberlost. Um, I don't know if there's anything really special about it. I just, uh, for a long time, um, I was really into selling antique or vintage books. Uh, it did really well for me for a long time. This is a really old listing. Um, but the, the market got pretty full with, uh, with vintage books. So unless you got a really rare one and uh, that's popular, um, just, just look them up. I was pretty much listing any vintage book or antique book I can find. And I did okay with it for a while, but there was a lot less listings when, uh, when I was first doing it. And the more listings you get, you know, you get price battles and uh, the prices just keep going down and down and down and down. So, this one was list, listed for at least a year, sold for $5.44, and it, was, it probably came from a, a thrift store somewhere. All right, this one was picked up at uh, that, ch that church thrift that I went to where I got the Vineyard Vines tie uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, I was debating on keeping this for myself because uh, I used to watch this when I was a kid, Mystery Science Theater. Um, and basically, it's just a couple of goofball like robots or space aliens watching old classic movies and, uh, and talking trash about them and you know, joking around about them. Um, I don't even know if it was that good of a show, but it's kind of nostalgic, nostalgic for me. It kind of brings me back to watching it when I was a kid. I think it was on late at night, and I was always one of those kids that stayed up late and liked to sleep in. I wasn't much of an early bird kind of kid. But I paid uh, $1 for it. Uh, took about a week to sell for $13.60. All right, so um, these are... Um, EMS or firefighter or police uh, station pants. Um, I picked these up at the Goodwill bins and 
uh, I picked them up because it looked like our, uh, I believe it was, uh, I live in the Tucson area, and I believe Tucson Fire Department must have donated all of their old uniform pants uh, to the Goodwill, and then they all just went to the bins directly. Uh, because I got about, I would say, 150 pairs of them. Um, there was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pairs at the bins. So I kind of cherry-picked all the ones that were in good condition. I used to be a firefighter, and uh, I used to go in and take my purchase order from my department into the uniform uh, stores. And these things were between $50 and $75 a pair. So when I saw all of them, I was like, those are expensive. Before I was a career firefighter, I was a volunteer firefighter, and we didn't have the budget to pay for our uniforms, the department. So we actually had to buy our own uniforms. And I have had to buy a pair of these out of pocket before, and I did. I paid about uh, 50 bucks for one pair, and it was the only pair of station pants that I had. Um, I washed them every day in between shifts and until I got hired on uh, full-time as a career firefighter. So when I saw all these EMS pants, uh, yeah, I bought about 150 pairs of them. They cost me about a buck fifty to $2 per pair. Uh, a large majority of them uh, have sold throughout the year. Um, they've been listed for about a year. Um, I'm down to, to not very many left. I, I've sold most of them. Most of them sold for in, in about the $20 range. So this one's, these ones... I have $2 into them. They have been listed for nine months to maybe a year. I can't, I don't remember exactly. And they've sold for, it's over $9 and 51 cents. All right, this is a retail arbitrage deal. I have picked up about 300 or so of these phone cases. Uh, I paid $3 a piece for them from Walmart. And there's all different colors and sizes and varieties, but it's all the, Pretty much all spec um, right here the, the brand spec and uh, they've been selling really well for me so I have three dollars into this one and uh, we got eleven dollars and thirty cents um, it is an arbitrage deal I believe there is still Walmart's out there arbitraging them um, I stopped at about six or seven of my local Walmart's but the only one Walmart had them clearanced for three dollars. The rest of them had them clearanced for fifteen dollars or ten dollars um, or nineteen dollars or something like that. Uh, Walmart was trying to sell them for forty bucks a piece, something ridiculous. Um, and uh, that one Walmart had them clearanced at three dollars, and they had about three hundred of them, three hundred of them clearanced. I picked them all up, um, and they they've been. Uh, I, I think I've definitely made my money back at this point on them, and I still have a lot left. So this, uh, this came from the Goodwill bins. Um, you'll see a lot of Keurigs coffee makers at the Goodwill bins, and uh, you don't want to sell them themselves because they have mildew and they're nasty and typically don't work, um, and they've been beat to hell. But they have a, this is the water reservoir, the tank. So this, uh, uh, I would always, there'd be a lot of Keurigs in there, in the, in the, in the bins. So I always bring a Sharpie with me to the bins. So when I see stuff like this, uh, there's no modern model number on these things. So I would, uh, if it would be connected to the unit, I would get the model number off the unit. I want to write it right there on the tank uh, reservoir and the lid, if it's got the lid. And then there's a drip tray that goes with the Keurig. Also, grab that as well, write the model number on there. You might need a, a silver or gray uh, Sharpie for that because it's typically black itself. Um, the parts to the Keurigs sell really well. I sell a lot of the parts. Um, so yeah, if you're going to the bins, uh, I would leave the Keurig unit itself there, but grab all the accessories on it because these things crack, break, they get lost, you know, and it's made out of thin plastic. Uh, but the Keurig coffee maker itself is very expensive. And some people are just particular to their coffee make, you know, makers. Um, it makes their coffee the way they like it. So if it breaks or something uh, they, a piece of it breaks off or they lose it or something like that, they want to replace it. They want their coffee maker. So be on the lookout for that. Remember your Sharpie when you go to uh, the, the Goodwill bins just in case you need to write down a model number. And that'll rub right off pretty easily with a with a cotton ball, a rag, and some uh, some rubbing alcohol.
uh, that took about, I would say about four or five months to sell and I have less than a dollar into it. So this came out of, uh, uh, let's see, um, came out of, I got this at an auction. All right, so I got this at an auction of a big, huge bin of wires and cables and adapters and and uh, power cords and stuff like that. I buy them uh, in the bulk load, I process through them, and uh, what doesn't have a model number on it uh, goes to the recycling yard and what does and has value gets listed. So this is like an old school like Apple uh, Express modem and uh, there was nothing else listed on eBay for it so I just kind of put it up there and, uh, and listed it for $16.01. It sold within about three weeks and I probably have less than a quarter into it. And here's another pair of EMS pants. Um, like I said, I got about $2 into this. Took about nine months to sell, and this one sold for $9.51 as well. All right, this is the floor of the back floor of my old thrift store. So, my wife and I used to own a thrift store or a secondhand store, and uh, so this, uh, this, we were buying a lot of storage lockers back then. So, this came out of a storage locker, I'm sure. Probably have a quarter into it. These are, uh, uh, Adidas pull off warm up pants. Uh, I wouldn't, I mean, if you're okay with making $6 to $10 uh, on a pair of pants, and if you're getting it out of a storage locker, I, I definitely, yeah, go for it. You know, you're probably not going to get much selling it at a yard sale or, or, or a swap meet or something like that. So if you're, uh, if you're working uh, storage lockers, I mean, they do sell but you're going to get, you know, this price for it, about 6 to $10 for them. So, yeah, and this took, uh, took a year to sell. All right, this is a uh, vintage Arizona Wildcats sweater. I got this at the Goodwill bins. I find a lot of Arizona Wildcats stuff at my bins because that is uh, our local university. Uh, I probably paid maybe about $2 for it. It took... Let's say three months to sell, and we got thirteen dollars and sixty-seven cents. All right, so this is the top little pusher part that uh, that goes to the Cuisinart food processors. Uh, you stick the food in, and then you push it down with this little pusher piece, so you're not uh, blending your fingers up. Um, this is a uh, this is probably the slowest moving part uh, when it comes to the Cuisinarts. This and the flat blades, the little disc blades. Some of the disc blades sell really well, some of them uh, move a little bit on the slow side. Uh, the initial parts, uh, the bowl, the lid, um, the, uh, the pusher that goes on top of the lid, um, those all sell really, really, really fast in, uh, in the motors if you price them right. This one has been listed for this one's been listed for maybe less than a month, so this one moved pretty quick, pretty quickly. But you're not going to get twenty dollars to twenty five dollars for for this part. This is about what you're going to get for it, um, maybe up to about ten bucks. But yeah, five, maybe seven, ten on the high end. More memory. So these are Kingston, uh, two gigabyte. Um, I don't know what these are called. I don't know if I should call them chips or you know, RAMs. Is it like a microchip or a memory chip? Uh, I don't know. If you know, please throw it in the comments. Um, educate me uh, because I'm definitely going to buy more of these if I have the opportunity to. Uh, so I have a buck a piece into these. They, uh, they've been listed for a couple of days and they sold for $10.85. All right, this is a snap-on swivel socket. Um, this came out of a storage locker long ago, um, so I probably have less than a quarter into it. And um, with, uh, with snap-on parts, they all have a model number on them. So they should be really easy to look up. The model number right here, FS25. So a lot of people out there are looking at this, and you're thinking, what the heck is that? 
Um, if you're not into tools or anything like that, or maybe you know what a socket is, but it's like, it looks like a socket, but it's not a socket, and you don't know that it's that, uh, what a swivel socket is. When it comes to snap-on, they are high-end expensive tools, and high-end expensive anything, they put model numbers on them. So I tried to get some, the, the pictures of the model number on it, see if I can find it, if I took good enough pictures. This one might be it. Right there, FS24. So a lot of the other ones you'll see uh, made in the USA, and you'll see measurements like 3 fourths or 3 eighths. And you see those numbers right there, that is your model number. And that is your reference to looking up comps on uh, Snap-on tools. So the, this here, I, I had, a, had a whole box full of these. This is the low end of what they were selling for. I sold these things upwards of like $25 a piece. Um, and they're tiny, they're, they're tiny, tiny. They go right into a first class poly miller, uh, super easy to ship. This one here has been listed for about seven to eight months. Have uh, about a quarter into it, sold for $6.16. Here is another spec phone case. Um, the last one you saw sold for about 13 and change. Some of these things are selling for as low as $8 or $7 and change. And some of them have been selling in the $20 range and 17 and above. So this one definitely went higher. I paid $3 for all of them. Um, so $17.42, that, that is a great uh, return on investment. Um, and I'm not uh, paying the shipping on these. So um, yeah, I'm probably making an extra dollar on shipping, which I mean, helps pay for my, uh, my envelopes and the, my, my labels and everything like that. But I am making a little extra on the, on the shipping, not intentionally, and I don't I don't recommend anybody intentionally trying to make money on on shipping because shipping prices are outrageous and uh, they're not helping us make sales these days, and they're going to get worse after December. So brace yourself for that one. Uh, the buyer is always going to blame you. They're they're always going to accuse you of having high shipping prices, especially if you're doing calculated. Uh, which I do. I do calculated shipments. So uh, I don't even create the price. I just uh, punch in the size and dimensions of the package. And then eBay and USPS or FedEx, you know, they work out their deal on what the, the expense is going to be to the customer. But when it comes to, you know, hearing about it and the, the frustrations from customers, they're going to contact you and ask you, why are you charging so much for shipping as if uh, you're pocketing it? So, uh, don't try to scam people on shipping. Uh, sell your products. Try to keep your shipping costs low without biting the bullet. I'm not telling, asking, or telling anybody to pay for the shipping out of pocket, but uh, don't try to get one over on any of your customers. Try to be honest with them. Um, yeah. Anyhow, all right. That's one of my rambling on things that I do a lot. If you haven't noticed. All right. So this is uh, this has been listed for uh, about a year. This is a Sunbeam um, thermostat. This goes to like an electric skillet. And uh, it's basically an AC adapter or a, a power cord, just like uh, many others that I sell. Uh, this was probably in my thrift store. It was probably at the, the electric griddle. I, have, uh, I would have terrible luck selling electric griddles in my thrift store. Um, I would leave them on the shelf for about a month. And if they didn't move within a month for, you know, $2.00. Uh, and then we would do half price sales, so they go down to a dollar. Um, if it if it went that long, then it's going to the dump or it's being redonated to uh, uh, the Salvation Army. And uh, uh, but we would uh, if they were going to the dump, we would pull the AC adapters or the power cords out of them because obviously um, I couldn't sell the whole griddle for a dollar, but I can sell the 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 uh, the power adapter for and control module for four dollars and five cents and that's on the low end with those typically I've, I've gotten uh, upwards of like 17 bucks for uh, for those exact ones all right this is um I got this at a, uh, a local auction I got a whole pallet of these backpacks they were used and new um, I probably had about 150 of them we uh, we cleaned them all up we uh, processed through them. We, we sent them all through uh, the wash and dried them and hanged them. And they, I mean, it was a it was a two day job. 
but we went in through and then we kind of uh, made a grading list on how we were going to grade each one of them. We were going to be good, very good, and some of them were very obviously new and had never been used before. So those ones went into like a, a bin of new without tags. And then uh, a large, large portion of them, portion of them had too much damage um, or zippers weren't working, and uh, those ones just got donated to uh, to the Salvation Army. Um, so these have been listed for uh, since the summertime. It is December, so they've been listed for about three or four months. And um, I got less than a dollar into each one of these th these backpacks, these Swiss Gear backpacks. And the the ones in good condition are selling for ten dollars and eighty five cents. Drones for dummies. Um, uh, another thing I'm sure my lister found and, and uh, just keeping himself busy. He likes to eat. He would uh, like the easy listers, like books with barcodes, where it would pre-fuel most of the, do the most of the work for you, and you can knock them out in a minute or two. Not as fast as Amazon, but still easy to list books on eBay, especially if you have a barcode. Uh, it's been listed for about, uh, I'd say, at least six months. Some more memory, memory sales. Oh, there you go, Scott, bearded picker. He, uh, I got a I can't help it. Sorry. Some of the stuff that he says, it's a, uh, it kind of just, it, it gets, it gets you. So uh, he likes to say a, a saying about about Sony uh, products uh, that Sony sells, and he's got this, uh, this, this uh, Alabama accent, this country accent. So it kind of just flows really, really well. Um, and uh, yeah, so memory sells too, Scott. Um, if you guys don't know about the bearded picker. Uh, Scott, check out his channel. He gained some uh, a lot of popularity recently on a video that he put out about a certain Monopoly game. So if you don't know who the bearded picker is or who Scott is, you might know about the 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 guy that made the the Monopoly video recently. So anyhow, more memory. This is a let's see. This is two. No, this is two four gigabyte. Yes, two four gigabytes, so a total of eight gigabytes. Uh, got a buck into each, sold for eighteen dollars and ninety six cents, and sold within a couple days. All right, this is a remote control. I sell lots of remote controls. Uh, be on the lookout for them. Um, any any of them that say DVD player, or um, yeah, DVD player, or anything. Just don't don't pick up the ones that are like Direct TV or or local cable companies or satellite companies, um, unless it's like a universal remote, because uh, there's there's not much there. They're they're flooded. You can get them free from uh, from your local cable companies and satellite companies. They'll replace them for free for the most part. But this one goes to probably a stereo system or a, a receiver of some sort, and uh, I probably have about a quarter into it. Super easy to list. Uh, I believe it's been listed for about. Uh, four or five months and it sold for uh, just under nine dollars all right I picked these up at a local thrift store um, this weekend and uh, they are phone jacks it's a phone jack system you don't always find them together like this um, but you can still sell these individually and you can see that these are radio shack and radio shack products have historically never been great products um, it's kind of like an RCA um, Radio Shack, it's like uh, cheap, cheap electronics. But uh, I have a lot of luck selling these. Whenever I see them out and the price is right, I pick them up. I paid fifty cents a piece for these, so a dollar altogether. Um, sold them within twenty four hours for twenty one oh five. All right, here's another snap on swivel, uh, swivel socket. Uh, it's been listed for the same amount of time which uh, I believe I said was, I don't know, maybe uh, eight months or so. And got a quarter into it. And it sold for about the same price, $6.19. Snap on. Snap on anything. More memory. So this is a good one right here. Uh, this is a single uh, memory stick or chip. 
uh, 8 gigabyte, those are the big boys. Those are the ones you want to look out for. Those are the best ones. Uh, they're probably they probably get bigger than that. Uh, I'm still educating myself on these things. One thing I do know about them though, they sell. So, uh, um, yeah, I got a dollar into this and sold for $54.40. Took me about two minutes to list. It'll take me about that or less to ship it. Uh, yeah, so look out for that RAM memory. All right, this is Bogle, Bogle. Um, I got this at a Goodwill thrift store. I believe I paid 99 cents for it. It is complete with uh, with the manual and all, and it's been listed for about six months, seven dollars and seventy nine cents. I thought I'd get a little bit more for it, but that's okay. It was an easy shipment. Still went first class too. More memory. Uh, this is a one four gig gigabyte stick. And it is made by Samsung. Uh, let's see if I can show you right there. The M378B number is what you're going to look for. You also want to put in that dash CH9. The number behind it, the, uh, the 1139, I, I think that's kind of irrelevant. I think that's more of a um, just the kind of a lot that was made at that time or something like that. But it's not irrelevant to the model itself. Just... Um, uh, it's more I think it's more of a date type of thing no huh. I think this was the next no it wasn't let's go back over here we'll get to that one I don't know why it keeps doing that I think I'm touching my mouse pad with two fingers and it's and it's doing that for some reason it's a little sensitive but anyhow a uh, dollar into it a couple days to sell fifteen dollars and ninety eight cents all right this is a vintage uh, polo sport Ralph Lauren jacket this has got a real lightweight jacket um, Vintage polo stuff does really well. There's some other YouTubers that do really well with uh, with this stuff. Um, uh, Tommy Hilfiger. If you get the right stuff for like Tommy Hilfiger, it's really, really good. But it's got to be really nice stuff. And it's got to be like really loud vintage. I haven't had the best luck with like Tommy Hilfiger. But polo, polo sport, polo jeans, uh, 90s stuff I have had some good luck with. Uh, especially if it's got the polo bear on it. This is a real simple jacket. There was nothing on the back, just the, the polo on the front, the polo sport. Um, I found this at the bins, so I have about $2 into it. Sold for $17.42, and it took about six months to sell. You're not seeing double. I sold two of these within a week, and they were both uh, listed probably six months ago. Um, right around the same time. Um, maybe a, a few weeks apart from each other. Uh, I'm assuming it has something to do with Christmas time, and uh, there's a lot of drones being sold right now. So there's another drones for dummies. Um, unless it's a, a new new book coming out, the, these uh, these something for dummies books. Um, I, I don't know how well they sell on Amazon, but they typically don't sell that well on eBay. So I wouldn't really suggest them unless they're new. Uh, they're easy to look up though. I mean, it's got a barcode, so looking up comps is uh, pretty easy. Uh, I got this out of a storage locker, so I have uh, less than a quarter into it. Sold for four dollars and twenty-four cents, but took six months to sell. All right, so this is a uh, an, this is for a Apple desktop computer. It's an older mouse. Um, I got this out of one of my wire bins that I get from the auction. So I have about a quarter into it. This took about five months to sell, and we got $6.62 for it. All right, so this is definitely an old listing because it's a very amateur setup. And uh, um, the placement of the shoes, but I mean, look how dirty that is. It doesn't, I mean, I would never do that today. Um, and, and I didn't do this one, actually. Um, but it's all right. It is what it is. And uh, the, the tips of these, these shoes are a little scuffed up. I probably would. Uh, nowadays, I would polish those up. And uh, I, we don't do the shoes set up like this anymore. We, we place them together, and we just kind of set them at an angle so you can get like a long view of the side and the top. And uh, we place them on white backgrounds so we can really brighten it up and uh, make them look a lot better. But these have been listed for well over a year. Uh, Giorgio Bertini. I know some of these can do well. Uh, I don't pick them up anymore. 
because I didn't have great luck with them. But then again, if all the pictures look like this, uh, you can see why. Um, these are leather, and then th these are also oxfords. Oxford meaning the basically that they're lace up, um, and they're not slip on. Slip on are loafers. Oxfords are lace up. Um, I probably have. I would say about three dollars into these. They took uh, well over a, a year to sell, and we got nine dollars and one cent, which I'm happy with because at least uh, at least they sold. You know, they're gone, and I didn't have to like uh, just get rid of them. At least we made something off of them. All right, this came out of a storage locker that I got about seven months ago. I got a ton of camera stuff out of the storage locker. It's been a huge win, and it's been uh, it's been paying out ever uh, ever since I got it about uh, seven to nine months ago, maybe. Maybe it's been even longer than that. Um, so I have about a quarter into this. This is a re uh, expired um, camera film. Don't don't worry about that. Expired film sells phenomenally. So like, if you see expired film and it's the right price, pick it up. Easy to list, and uh, they sell really, very well. You can't sell it on Amazon, though. You can still sell it on eBay. All right, so I got a big, big pile of these. Um, these, these are for like a Harry Potter uh, trading card game. These, these were possibly free at the time that the the, the Harry Potter trading cards came out, um, because um, I, I came across a stack of these. I have. Well, it says here that I have six left, but I'm pretty sure there's more than that. I swear eBay's been messing with my. Uh, um, my quantities because I, I have about 20 of these that's weird but anyhow um, uh, be on the lookout for stuff like this you know uh, you, you get lots of places that uh, that have uh, you know things like this and they'll give you these freebie things um, say like the, the Monopoly game at, at, at uh and McDonald's, just for an example, just for I'm not saying like to pick up those, but stuff like this that's uh that you know there's a big collector's market, <clears throat> and um, I, I'm I'm sure there was you know millions of kids collecting the these trading card games or these trading cards, and they were probably just giving out these board games, and uh, you know somebody because uh, these came out of a storage locker probably came and just grabbed the whole stack of them and stuck them in their collection and then uh we come across and you know 17 years later 18 years later it's like well check these out you know these might be worth worth some money and uh i looked them up and there was one other guy who had one that was somewhat similar and they were selling theirs for well they had them listed for twenty dollars and so i came in a little bit under them it's a different board game and I put my quantity in, and I showed some pictures of it, and I've actually, uh, you know, I've sold a couple of these already, and we're making 15 bucks a piece for them. And these, like I said, were probably free. Um, but you know, people like to complete their sets and, uh, or, or just get stuff like this, you know. So yeah, be on the lookout. You know, use your imagination. You know, think outside of the box a little bit, and uh, think, you know, just imagine what things are going to be like, you know, 15, 20 years down the road. For this oddball stuff that you know like i said was probably being given away for free at the time so this has been listed for about two two months and uh we sold 15 dollars and 12 cents and have almost nothing into it more memory uh rib jaw these ones uh these ones are definitely selling uh better than 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 the rest of them these uh, g skill rip jaws but this is a four gigabyte um Listed for a couple of days, have a dollar into it, and sold it for nineteen dollars and ninety cents. All right, so this one actually, I, I might be able to educate some people on uh, because this is actually new to me. Fort Cashmere. Um, I found this at uh, the Goodwill Bins, and um, what caught my attention most about it, like this, this is something that would just make some with the clothes, and I wouldn't even think twice about it, but. Um, when I touched it, it was super, super soft. So I could tell right off the back, okay, this is cashmere. Uh, cashmere is not always, you know, a great sell, but you know, it, it, there, there is opportunity with cashmere. Um, 
and I pulled it, I pulled it out, and, it, and that's the brand, Fort Cashmere, um, and I'd never heard of it before. So I love researching, you know, items that, that I've, I've never heard of before, brands I've never heard of before, especially when I touch it and I can feel it and I can feel this is a quality sweater. This is a nice sweater. I don't know if it's my style, but it definitely feels like quality material. I've never heard of the name. I took the time to look it up while, you know, I was at the bins and boom. They were selling between $50 to $150. It was like, wow. I, I was excited to find this new brand. And, uh, and it, it's been listed since, uh, I think we listed it around July. So it's been listed for about four or five months, but it wasn't going to sell for a majority of those months. I've actually had a little bit of traffic on it uh, in the last couple months uh, asking about it. Somebody sent me a message and just said, nice sweater. Um, I don't know what that means. I don't know if this is the same person that bought it, but they want took the time to message and say that's a really that's a nice sweater. Um, but be on the lookout, Fort Cashmere. I don't know how big of a brand it is. I don't think that was there was that many um, active, but be on the lookout for uh, Fort Cashmere. Fort Cashmere. It is a you'll know it when you feel the material too. It's really nice. So paid uh paid about two dollars for it and. Uh, Got uh, fifteen or forty nine seventy seven. Took about four or five months to sell. Next up, more memory. G skill more is just G skill ones. It's uh it's not the red one, which was uh the the rip jaw or something like that. Um, these are the blue ones. This one is four gigs. Um, I don't know why it's set up like that. It shouldn't be set up like that. Uh, I might get a return on this one. Hopefully they don't. It should just be a four gig. That's uh, you you got to be really careful with these when it comes to listing to listing them too, because there's just so many numbers going on. When I was listing them, um, my brain was getting scrambled with all the numbers and keeping track of them. Definitely be organized when you're listing them, and try not to to mix numbers. Check, double check, triple check, and uh, make sure, especially if you're you're copying other listings. And you're selling like, um, make sure uh, if you're copying a listing that was selling two and you're only selling one to remove that out of the titles. You know, if it says free shipping and you're not doing free shipping, remove that out of your titles. Make sure you're going through every step and you're looking over everything and the, in the specific the item specifics too. You know, tweak everything that needs to be tweaked if you're copying uh, somebody else's sold products. But that one, a couple days, sold for sixteen seventy seven. I have a dollar into it. And this looks like it's it. Last one. And this is a um, Zoomed uh, Reptisun light. So this is basically just a heat lamp for reptiles. Uh, this came out of a storage locker about, about at least a year ago. I don't know if it's been listed for that long. I think it's probably been listed for about five or six months. Uh, so we've got you know, less than a quarter into it, and it sold for $10.60. So, there you go. This is my longest sold video I've ever done. Uh, I'm definitely getting a lot more comfortable um, with my videos. I'm still a new um, YouTuber, so some of my, my previous videos, a little bit more, more nervy on them, because uh, it's a real unnatural feeling for for me to be recording myself or uh, even just audio and without picture. So hopefully this got better. It feels a lot better. I hope y'all got some, some nuggets from, from the items that I've sold and some, some of the things I've told you about them and what to do and what not to do and um, what I've paid for them kind of give you a reference of what you should pay for them and what they can sell for. Um, all in all, thank you for, for tuning in and listening if you made it all the way to the end. Um, and if you have any comments or questions or anything like that, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, I will get back to you, and we'll catch you next time. All right? Thanks again, guys. Have a good night. We'll see you. Bye.